Hey everybody, this is Alex with uccx.net and uh, what this video is going to do is to show you how to actually integrate the Unified Contact Center Express 7 with a call manager or Cisco Unified Communication Manager 7 uh, installation. So in the previous videos what we did was actually installed the application. Uh, in this video we're actually going to integrate it. Um, at the end of the last video, if you look through the blogs, we actually left off where we were installing the disk uh, onto the hard drive and at the end of that process it asked you to do excuse me, a reboot. Um, essentially once you do that reboot when you log into the machine for the first time you'll come to this splash screen. Um, the URL for the splash screen is going to be the IP address or if you need to get back to this you can also use localhost uh, forward slash app admin. Um, the first time that you log into this and this is something that I always forget uh, the username and password is administrator and then Cisco Cisco. Uh, no capitalizations in the password. Um, essentially you're going to get the same message that I warned you about before about CSA so if you have CSA running make sure you disable it or else you're going to have some issues with the installation. Uh, best practice for CSA if you have it installed before you do the integration or the installation is to actually set it to disable or stop it and then set it to manual so that you actually manually have to start it once the process is over and then you can switch it back to automatic. A um, few things here. Uh, if this is just a single um, Contact Center Express server um, and you're not going to do cluster, then what you need to select in the drop down here is single node. Um, if this is the first node in a HA solution, you want to select first node, or if you're adding a subscriber or a second uh, server to the cluster, you would click add to cluster. Or uh, if all hell breaks loose and you need to do a restore, um, you can certainly do the restore here. But in our case, we're going to do single node. Click setup. Um, the first time I saw this, this, this is kind of new for um, Call Manager 7 or Unified Communications Manager 7. Actually, it goes back to um, Unified Communications Manager 5. Uh, this is called Axel. Um, it stands for the Administrative XML Layer. Um, so if you think about it this way, everything in the Call Manager has a web page um, that you can hit where you can actually key in settings and configuration changes to the uh, Unified Communication Manager. Um, what Cisco's done is they've actually opened up an API or an application programming interface on the back end of the Unified Communications Manager where you can actually, if you're a good enough programmer, you can actually write raw code um, to insert and retrieve items from the Call Manager servers. Uh, and that's what a lot of the applications are using these days. Uh, CUPS uses Axel, um, Contact Center Express uses Axel, uh, various third-party plugins use Axel. It, it's going to be the, it, it's basically the open source API to get into Call Manager. Um, now, what you need to do though um, to set this up, uh, first thing you have to do is specify the username, or sorry, the IP address of the uh, publisher. It has to be the publisher, Can it, cannot be any of the subscribers. Um, you have to specify the Axel username and password that you have configured on the call manager. Now what I'm going to do here is flip over and show you how I actually created that. Um, here I have my call manager 7 GUI up. Um, first thing you need to do is to configure user management. We're going to go down to user group here. And what you'll see is a list of the standard uh, user groups that come with Unified Communications Manager 7 or 6 or 5. What I've done is I've actually clicked add new here. Um, and I've created a user group called Axel Users. Okay. Now once you've saved that uh, and you click the save button, there's nothing in this list here. There's no users. So what we do is underneath related links here, we're going to use the related links and we're going to say assign role to user groups. And what we're going to do is click assign role to group. And what you'll see here is this first link, standard Axel API access. You want to check that box and click add selected. And what that'll do is put that role underneath this user group. So the way Call Manager does permissions is that you have roles that are defined. Think of a role as like your permission level, right? What you can do, what you can't do. You assign that to a group. Uh, you can call the group name whatever you want, and then you assign the users to that group. You can't really directly uh, assign a role to a user. You have that middle layer called the user group. So this creates the group for us um, that has the right permissions to use Axel. And then what we have to do is click on user management and application user. This is extremely important for you guys that are upgrading from communication or sorry, UCCX3 or CRS, IPCC, whatever you want to call that. Um, you may have noticed that you had all your user accounts in the older Windows versions of Call Manager under end users. The new thing that they have in Communications Manager 5, 6, and 7 is the concept of an application user. Uh, application users, basically super users, elevated privilege users, things like that, things that different various programs are going to use to connect into the call manager, and those do not get shown in the directory. 
Um, there was a big problem a couple years ago where people were seeing things in the directory that they, they didn't want. It was very convoluted to hide that in, in Windows-based call managers. But essentially what I've done is I've created a, under user management application user. I've added a new user called Axel User. Gave it a, user, uh, a username Axel User and a password. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice under groups here, I've actually added the Axel User group. And the way I did that was I clicked Add to Group. Check mark the box here for Axel User and hit Add Selected. Now, once you've done that, you've done everything you need to do to properly set up the Unified Communications Manager for the CRS integration. So if we flip back over to our uh, UCCX integration here, you'll notice that same username and password. What I'm going to do is click Next. It's going to think for several minutes uh, or several seconds here, and it'll try to connect into Call Manager using the back-end API or the Axle API. Uh, if this is not successful, you won't be able to go any further with the installation. So this, you'll see the little progress bar here. Um, the window will, will um, take a little bit. Now, uh, what you have to do here is actually upload your license files. Um, for you guys that aren't familiar with licensing, there's a website you can go to. It's www.cisco.com forward slash go forward slash license. Uh, what that'll do is you'll have to enter a pack. And what a pack is is when you get your box of CDs from, for your Contact Center Express, um, you'll see a white little slip in there that's got a pack number or a product activation key. You'll have to enter that on that website and Cisco will actually email you the license file. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just selecting under browse to the license file that they sent me. By the way, the license files that they send you will always end in .lic. Um, um, so essentially once you have selected your license file and down at the bottom or uploaded your license file and you click next down at the very bottom of that screen you'll see uh, a splash screen telling you please wait and you'll come to this screen right here which says system component activation completed. Um, what you want to do here is click next. Uh, now th this is sort of important screen here um, because in the old uh, contact center express environment you are essentially um, having to do all this manually on both sides and pray to God that it lined up um, or in the CRS IPCC days. So what, what, essentially what you're doing here is three major pieces to getting Contact Center Express to work. And the first is the Axle Service Provider configuration. Um, what we're doing here is we're actually specifying which Axle providers or what call manager we're going we're gonna to use um, to connect via Axle with. So what you'll notice here is I have a pub and a sub. My publisher is 1010-21011 and my subscriber is 1010-21012. Um, normally you would see both of these IP addresses over here and what you'd have to do is highlight and you can move back and forth. But what I'm going to do is move this back over. Um, so my publisher is 1010-21011 and that should be the only unified communication manager that is running the Axle API service is the publisher. Here's my Axle username and password. Um, the next major piece here is the unified CM telephony subsystem. Now what you can think of this is uh, if you ever go into call manager and you go under device and you look at CTI ports, um, this is the subsystem over in UCCX that manages your CTI ports or your JTAPI triggers if you've ever seen that before. Um, this is essentially the link in call manager to uh, UCCX where you send telephone calls or calls to a call center. Um, and I'll explain this in a different um, video more in depth, but essentially what we need to do is to select the um, uh, unified CM telephony subsystem or the server that we want to tell UCCX to talk to about CTI ports. Um, normally what I would say here, if you have multi-server environment or multi-cluster call manager, is that you want to put your subscriber first and then your publisher, or all of your subscribers first and then your publisher. And the reason that is, 